Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to our next lesson in the C programming language series. In this lesson, we're going to go and take a few steps back and talk about structs and unions. Now, this is a topic that we've talked about previously before, but I want to do a little bit of review and just show you something that you might see in some code bases to help you with your reading of C programming code. So what I'm going to talk about today is this idea of an anonymous struct and an anonymous union. And oftentimes you'll see them in code bases, especially some older code bases from GCC, where they introduce this feature known as, again, an anonymous struct or anonymous union. That is something without a name. So let's go ahead and see how we use this and why it might help you write some more flexible or maybe better APIs for using your code. All right, with that said, let's go ahead and step into it here. And what I'm going to go ahead and do here is open up a main C file here. And you're going to go ahead and see just one type deft union here. OK, so recall what a union is. A union is something that takes the type of the largest data type in your union. OK, so what does that mean here? Let's go ahead and uh, structure this just a little bit here. So we have this type def uh, union here called vec2. And you're going to see there's really three chunks here. There's the stuff at line eight. Uh, which I'll highlight here. And let me go ahead and just rearrange this uh, for a moment. And there we are, just so we can see the uh, type def union here. And really, again, the three blocks here, elements two. So let's go ahead and uh, highlight that here. Uh, elements, which is two. And the data type here is important that it's a float. And then you're going to see this struct with no name, and that's what makes it anonymous. And it's got a float for the width and a float for the height. And I know I'm writing this out again. I know it's already here, but I just want to make it clear what this point is, uh, that I've got a float for the x and a float for the y. And I, I am labeling these on different lines here, just like in my code to make a point here of what is going on here. Okay, so what is the point of this? Well, again, recall with a union that it takes on the biggest data type here. Okay, so what's the biggest data type? What's the biggest collection of bytes? Well, on my architecture, a float, and let's go ahead and put some more facts here, a float equals four bytes, okay, on my system. OK, then you can measure this with size of like we've seen in the series. So basically, that means here where I've got one sort of uh, field, this is eight bytes. So this is uh, and let's just go ahead and label this here. Eight bytes and then a struct of two floats is eight bytes. And then another struct of two floats is eight bytes here. OK, so if a union takes on the largest data type at any given time, that means, well, this union is going to be eight bytes here. If we're accessing it with elements, maybe elements at index zero, elements at index one, it's going to be eight bytes here if we're accessing this as width and height. And it's going to be eight bytes if we're accessing this as X and Y here. So I hope you're starting to see the point of what this lesson is showing here, that I can have one data type here called VEC2. And depending on how I'm using it, a VEC2 maybe as a mathematical quantity with two components. I might think of it as X and Y. Maybe I'm representing some shape in a 2D space where I want to know its width and its height, just two floats. Or maybe this does have some meaning here of just the zeroth and the first element here. Either way, depending on what's more convenient or what the context is, I can use one of these uh, sets of attributes here. OK, so let me go ahead and show this in code again, just so you can see how this works. Now, for some of you, depending on what C compiler you're using, you might need to use C11. My understanding is this has been something that's been part of GCC and even Clang for a long time. Uh, but this uh, anonymous struct and anonymous union. Um, so again, these could be unions inside here with just the union key name and no uh, name for the struct um, was a newer feature um, standardized in all C11 compilers. But most folks should have access to this if you're developing on the desktop. All right. Uh, so again, just to go ahead and show you how this works here, I have point here, uh, and it's a vec2 uh, underscore t, as I uh, named it here. And again, using the same type, but you can see that we're using dot width and dot height to access our rectangle because 
in that context, it sort of makes sense to think about the width and the height. Or if we just have a point, we're just accessing it as dot x and dot y. Okay, and we can use any of these uh, combinations as we need. So again, if it made sense, I could do point dot width and point dot height. It doesn't, right? A point doesn't really have width and height. But again, I'm just going to show you that th that value will still have five and three and the x and the y. And then likewise for our rectangle here, we could set the x and uh, the y here if we were printing those out to width, or we can use really any combination of these things here. Okay, so let's just go ahead and run this so I can go ahead and show you uh, that this does indeed uh, work here. We go ahead and run our program. And again, you can see that point, whether I'm accessing it with X or with width, is going to be 5. And whether I'm accessing it with Y or height is going to be 3. And the same for the rectangle. Okay. So again, you're asking yourself, hey, Mike, what's the point of this? Why would I want to use this feature? Well, again, when you're building data structures, especially things for other folks to use, like for instance, VEC2, which is very common in games, um, with a vector, we often mean it's a quantity with a magnitude and a direction, uh, but more mathematicians might think of it as something more like this with two elements here, okay? Um, so it doesn't really matter. And in fact, just to show you again, um, you know, how we could access a uh, point here, you know, uh, let's go ahead and call this, uh, you know, um, sum back two here, right? We could, can just as well do sum back two dot elements at zero, and elements one here and go ahead and assign these you know values here 1.0 f equals a 3.05 f or something like that um you know, just to again show you how to access these things now again in context you know just using dot x is shorter and faster we know it's being stored in this you know elements array just the same but we didn't have to uh say zero or one OK, so again, the context matters how we're using points. In some cases, it might help us prevent from doing errors, right? Like what if I, exam uh, for example, put in uh, a two here that even though it's not uh, existent and sometimes the code will compile, right? Let's go ahead and just show this. Uh, let's just go ahead and put uh, seven here. So I'll go ahead and compile it uh, and I can run it and it runs without errors mysteriously, right? We know this is just accessing some stack space somewhere that just happens to work. We kind of got lucky here. Um, so again, that's where this trick is useful, right? Just using X and Y, we won't make mistakes. Uh, sometimes you might notice if, if I hit my keys too fast, you know, it'll put in some uh, weird index here. So anyway, this is a little trick here. Uh, and again, it's hopefully also reinforcing in memory what this looks like. This uh, VEC2 uh, again is just laid out in memory here, vec2, uh, and I gave it underscore t as the type name. Uh, it's just a float and a float, OK? And how we access it, again, we have these different uh, options here. And as we know, with a union, depending on how we're accessing it, that's how the type is treated. But the underlying data, no matter what we do, is always just uh, two floats. Now, it was, again, important if I reverse these orders here, uh, height and width, you know, that order does matter how I lay things out. OK, so this is kind of putting together what we've learned about with structs and floats, some of the different things about how we uh, how unions work, how structs work. And it's just a really nice trick. And in some cases can, again, prevent us from making errors in our code. So folks, I hope that was a useful lesson. I hope it was insightful. I know this is something that I've sort of just learned. Um, from reading other people's code, right? And, and sort of putting together some of these ideas. This wasn't something that I learned out of a textbook, but I thought it was a neat trick that can make your code a little bit more resilient, your API a little bit more uh, useful, especially if you have different uh, types of data structures like VEC twos and threes and so on. So with that said, folks, thanks for your time and attention as always. Thank you to all my subscribers for staying subscribed. Thanks for the new folks for joining uh, and make sure you subscribe if you learned a new uh, neat trick here. And with that said, we'll go ahead and see you in the next video.